Welcome to How to Write a Romantic Subplot, How to Add Romance to Other Plot Structures, written by Julie L. Spencer, narrated by Julie L. Spencer. Introduction. Welcome to the world of writing romance. Or not. Maybe you've been writing romance for a while and want to hone your craft. Or maybe you think you're writing romance and recently learned that the stories you're writing are more accurately defined as stories with romantic subplots. That's what started me on this journey to improve my craft. I learned that the books I'm writing were considered love stories rather than romance novels. What's the difference? I'm glad you asked. You'll learn all about different kinds of romance stories in section one. For now, suffice it to say that I was doing it wrong and I needed to learn how to do it right. My countless hours of research have led us to this moment. You're holding the results in your hands. If you think you're writing romance, or want to include some element of romance into other kinds of fiction, you've come to the right place. Congratulations on choosing How to Write a Romantic Subplot to help improve your stories. I can't wait to see what you come up with. About this book. This book is meant to be used as a resource to help you improve your romance writing. Whether that's a traditional slow burn romance novel, or just a tiny hint of flirting within a story where your main characters are trying to save the world and bring peace to the galaxy. Perhaps you're writing the next great tragic love story and want to know the best location in your plotline for Romeo to kiss Juliet. I've organized this book to provide a bit of review for those of you who have already read my previous books in the How to Write Romance series. And then we jump right into crafting a cute little story about a guy trying to survive an earthquake and the resulting tsunami. Along the way, we'll learn about plot structures, subplots, romantic subplots, character arcs, and outlining. After that, I'll show you step-by-step step how to use several popular plot structures to plan out our earthquake story. By the time we're done, you'll be asking when our joint writing project, Earthquake Story, will be coming out in paperback. Why should you listen to me? I'm a best-selling multi-genre author with over 50 books published under three pen names. I've written mostly romance, love stories, and coming-of-age stories, along with some nonfiction books, religious books, children's books, and even a giant 411-page scientific document that is guaranteed either to put you to sleep or teach you how to clean a river, depending on if you're interested in environmental pollutants. Not much romance there, but whatever. My point is that I know what I'm talking about, partly because I've done it wrong enough times to learn how to do it right, and partly because I inherently know how to tell a story without needing an outline or plot structure. The story may not follow any rules, but it will be a darn good story. Some of my best stories, often with the highest ratings, are the ones that flowed through my fingers and didn't follow any rules. But maybe teaching how to write a novel like that is a lesson for a different book. Who knows, the night is young. I'm just here for the chocolate. Disclaimers. For the sake of this book, we're going to group everything that's not a romance, yes, I'm capitalizing that for emphasis, and call it a story with a romantic subplot. When I'm talking about adding romance, lowercase, I mean small touches, lingering glances, kissing, sex, general feelings that go beyond basic friendship or love between family members. Not to be blunt, but if two people desire to kiss or have sex, those are romantic feelings rather than love between friends and family. There are many levels of romance, and I don't just mean sex and kissing. I mean quantity. Some stories, such as dramas and tragedies, would be enhanced by adding a significant amount of romance, while adding too much romance to stories with action and suspense may actually be detrimental. I will use plot structure and story structure interchangeably. Also, plotting is not the same as outlining. I'll explain that better in Chapter 2. Our hero has to be the hero, and his love interest needs to either help or hinder his ability to be the hero. Before you go all politically correct on me, the same statement can be written with whatever pronouns you want to use for your hero and love interest. Whether you want to call him or her a hero or heroine, and whether you want the love interest to be male, female, or anyone in between, in these particular plot structures, there is one quote-unquote hero, and all other individuals or forces are there to either help or hinder the hero. I'm going to stick with traditional male-female pronouns for ease of telling the difference between the two main love interests, and I'm going to use the word hero with the understanding that the word is interchangeable with the word heroine. 
When I say hero and use the pronouns he, him, his, feel free to mentally substitute heroine and she, her, hers. I'm also choosing to use their as singular they. Note, if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 1. What is the difference? As I promised in the introduction, there is a difference between a romance and a story with a romantic subplot. Stories with a romantic subplot are often categorized as romance because they're so similar and because there's not really a good location in the bookstore on which to shelve them. A true romance consists of two main ingredients, a central plot focused around a romantic relationship, typically between two people, that follows the development of them falling in love, and a conclusion where the love these characters have for one another ends in a happy, uplifting, and emotionally satisfying way, happily ever after, or happy for now. If you can remove the romance from a story and still have the main plot, then you don't have a romance. You have a story with a romantic subplot. The difference is that in a romance, quote, the people falling in love, unquote, is the main plot, whereas in a story with a romantic subplot, the romance is a love story that coexists alongside the main plot. If the focus, or your character's main goal, is to save the world, and they happen to find love along the way, you have a story with a romantic subplot. Romantic subplots are great for several reasons. The relationship endears the readers to the characters. Their love gives the reader warm fuzzies, and part of the reason the reader wants the characters to succeed in their main quest is because the reader cares about the characters. Weaving romance into your story produces strong character development and increases the stakes for the character, especially if the character has to choose between accomplishing his original goal or saving the love of his life. Let's take a look at some other types of stories that are often categorized as romance, and I'll explain what sets them apart from a true romance. Love story. If you come to the end of a story and one or both main characters die, or they don't end up together, it's not a romance. It's known as a love story. A love story is a lot like a romance and is often confused and mislabeled that way. There's not a good way to classify them on an Amazon list or place them on a bookshelf other than to call the stories romance. In a love story, the central focus is on the romantic pairing between two people but there isn't necessarily a happy ending. A love story is usually dramatic, heart-wrenching, and powerful. Basically, anything by Nicholas Sparks. Women's fiction. Women's fiction often focuses on the woman's emotional and personal journey and may involve a lighthearted romance as one part of her journey, with an ending that could be either hopeful or tragic. A great example is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. Multi-genre or cross-genre. In a multi-genre, the main plot contains a romance plus something else, like a murder or ghost story. In a multi-genre romance, the romantic plot is equal in hierarchy to whatever other plot is involved, and the story could fit equally into more than one genre. Examples include historical romance, romantic thriller, science fiction romance, or paranormal romance, like The Twilight Saga by Stephanie Meyer. Drama a drama is a category of fiction that is more serious in nature, but not a tragedy, and possibly humorous, but not a comedy. The conflict in a drama is not the romantic relationship between the main characters. Drama can be further subcategorized into police crime, political drama, medical drama, teen drama, domestic, historical, legal, or soap opera. There may or may not be a happy ending. In a drama, there might be a dysfunctional relationship, an unhappy relationship, or a death. A drama may contain destruction, pain, or an abusive relationship. They're often powerful, cathartic stories written by people who have experienced drama similar to what is playing out on the pages of their books. They're often a story that the author feels needs to be told. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell would be a good example. Tragedy a tragedy is a story that involves human suffering, particularly with the main character. In a tragedy, somebody dies or is otherwise removed from the story in some heartbreaking way. The perfect example is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. 
Spoiler alert, if you've never read the story, they kill themselves in the end. Kill themselves. I mean, what the heck? They fell in love, they overcame all odds, and they married one another. If that were the end of the story and they rode off into the sunset, that story would have been a perfect romance. Instead, they kill themselves. That's truly tragic. If your story has a similar outcome, do not label your story as a romance or you will have very angry readers. Erotica and erotic romance. There's a difference between erotica and erotic romance. Both of them will be explicit in the bedroom scenes, or maybe on the kitchen table, or somewhere else exciting. Wherever the sex happens, it will be on screen. The reader won't just know it's happening, they'll pretty much experience every bump and grind. These two genres are often used interchangeably because romance often comes with sex and sex often comes with romance. Two people can fall in love and never have sex and alternatively have lots of sex and never fall in love. Or they might meet at a bar, go to a hotel with barely their first names, have a wild passionate night together, and decide in the morning if they want to exchange phone numbers. I live in a college town. Trust me, I've heard more than I want to know about this topic. In erotic romance, the romantic relationship is developed through sex, and sex is used to prompt character development and drive the plot forward. Plus, there will be probably a happily ever after. In erotica, the plot is driven by sexual encounters, and the goal is sexual gratification. If you remove the sex, there isn't really a story. Erotica might involve violence, infidelity, or an unhappy ending. What are you writing? Have you figured out yet what kind of story you're writing? It's okay if you haven't. This is only chapter one. We have a lot more to talk about. Let's take a step back and talk a little about plotting and outlining, as well as introduce our earthquake story. Note, if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 2. From Plot to Outline Before we go any further, I want to mention one very important and often overlooked detail. Stories can have more than one plot line but they can only have one outline. What is a plot? In its most basic definition, a plot is a sequence of events, usually linked chronologically, with a cause and effect relationship. For example, an earthquake happens, which causes the earth to crumble and shake beneath the character's feet, which causes them to fall into a crevice, which requires the characters to work together to climb out of the hole. The whole series of events would never have happened if there had not been an earthquake. Simple stories might have just one sequence of events, which can easily be plotted on a straight line. Other stories are more complex and might have several sequences of events happening simultaneously. That's why you'll often hear writers talk about stories having multiple plot lines or storylines and laugh lines, you know, because we laugh at our own stories. Sorry, getting back on topic. Earthquake story. We're going to use our earthquake example throughout the rest of this book to learn how to create the various subplots, so let's embrace that. Maybe we should name the story Earthquake Story. There, that was easy. We'll name our main character The Hero. You can assign whatever gender you want for your hero, but for ease in writing this book, I'm going to use masculine pronouns for our hero and feminine pronouns for the love interest, as she shall be called. Other characters may include a mentor and maybe a best friend or two. We'll see. For our basic story, the antagonist is the earthquake. So technically the proper term for our antagonist is an antagonistic force. Let's have our hero be a seismologist who is aware that an earthquake is building beneath Anchorage, Alaska, which is likely to cause a large tsunami along the west coast of the United States. Because he's known as a doomsday crier who regularly lectures and warns people that a big earthquake is coming and coastal communities need to be preparing for a big tsunami, his warnings are largely ignored until the 9.2 megathrust earthquake happens. Yes, I'm basing this on the 1964 Great Alaskan Earthquake, and damage is reported all up and down the northern coastal region. Our hero is a geek who is so intelligent most people can't understand him anyway. He's lonely, but resigned to the fact that he'll never find a woman who will share his passion or who is smart enough to hold a reasonable conversation. All right, let's see if you and I are smart enough to write a story about him. What is a plot structure? 
In order to organize our story into a plot structure, we need to tell the story of what our characters do to pick themselves back up. Remember that a plot is a sequence of events, usually linked chronologically with a cause and effect relationship. The plot structure is the design or layout of the story, the arrangement of events, the plan for the plot. You wouldn't build a house without a plan. Could you build a story without a plan? Yeah, probably. But then you wouldn't need my book. Personally, I just like telling a good story. Professionally, I need to understand basic plot structures. Below is a list of a few commonly used plot structures. There are probably dozens more, but you'll get a basic idea with just a few examples. I have faith in you. List of common plot structures. Three-act structure, hero's journey, save the cat, thick the in curve, Dan Harmon story circle, seven-point plot structure, writing into the dark. What is a subplot? A subplot is a secondary plot or side story which supports the main plot. Subplots are intertwined with the main plot and add depth to the main plot. They often take up less time than the main plot, have fewer significant events, and less impact on the story overall. In our earthquake story example, a subplot might include a fellow scientist being involved in saving the people trapped by the earthquake. The protagonist is still the guy who ultimately saves the people, and he can still save the people even if he doesn't have the fellow scientist involved. The conflicts and interactions between the hero and the fellow scientist is the subplot. What is a romantic subplot? A romance novel is a complex story with ups and downs, twists and turns, expected elements and rules, and a million moving parts. All of those parts can be inserted into a non-romance story. With most story structures, there is one hero, or protagonist, and an opposing force, or antagonist. The story chronicles the journey that one person takes to become change for the better. But a romance involves two protagonists, or does it? In a romance novel, the protagonist is, quote, the romance, unquote. The story is chronicling the journey one character takes to become change for the better. All characters in the story are just that, characters. But the protagonist is the romance. Remember from chapter one, if you can take the romance out of the story and still have a story, you don't have a romance. You have a story with a romantic subplot. I'm going to remind you of that so many times in this book that you're going to get sick of listening to me. A romantic subplot is a secondary plot where the conflict involves a love interest. The romance in the secondary plot should not be just the hero side by side with a woman he likes, and he happens to kiss her and give her flowers and proclaim his love to her. The conflict of the romantic subplot should be something that causes the hero to be distracted from his main goal, which might be to save the people who are trapped after an earthquake. You can almost think of a story with a romantic subplot as being a romance novel interwoven within a non-romance novel. The relationship endears the reader to the characters. The reader falls in love with the characters as they are falling in love with each other. Now the reader wants the hero to succeed in his main quest because the reader has fallen in love with the characters. A romantic subplot strengthens character development because the author has to show the reader all the reasons the love interests are right for each other. Including romance also increases the stakes for the character, especially if the hero has to choose between accomplishing their original goal or saving the love of their life. Will he sacrifice the love of his life to save the people trapped after an earthquake? Or risk failing in his quest to save the people because he refused to sacrifice the love of his life? Often the hero manages to find an alternative solution that saves the people and the love of his life. Or not, maybe they all die, and the reader is left in tears. Your story, your choice. What is a character arc? Before we start plotting, we need one more definition, that of a character arc. In its most simple form, a character arc is the change a character goes through from the beginning of the story to the end. It's kind of like a little plot line for the character's internal growth. Your character lacks something or wants something at the beginning of the story, and they spend their time trying to obtain that thing. In our earthquake story, our hero wants respect from the scientific community. He also wants to fall in love, but he doesn't know that yet. We're going to write that into his life as a romantic subplot. Lucky guy. Note. If you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com.
Chapter 3. The Basic Romance Outline Romance readers expect some very specific things to happen in your books, and if you stray from their expectations, they won't want to read your stories. But what if you're writing a romantic subplot? Do those rules still apply? Not really, but sort of. When adding romance into another genre, it's important that you understand what is required in a romance so you can grasp how those parts can be woven into another genre. In my book, How to Outline a Romance Novel, I go into extensive detail about the basic romance novel outline, but in this book, I'm providing an abbreviated outline and using that framework to create a plotline. An expanded, complete basic romance novel outline similar to the one in How to Outline a Romance Novel is provided in Appendix 1 of this book. When using romance as a subplot rather than the main plot, some of the bullet points of this outline will be irrelevant. You simply do what's right for your story. Huge detail about this plotline. These are not beats, scenes, or chapters. Some of these points may happen simultaneously or happen out of order. Some may even happen before the story begins. These are tiny little elements that are important to include in a romance novel in approximately this order. There are also parts of this plotline that will take longer than others. Some parts may take a sentence, whereas other parts may take 20 chapters. That will all depend on your story. Setup, meet cute, sparks fly. The meet cute is where our main character and our love interest meet for the first time within the story. They might actually know each other in advance, but this is the first interaction within the framework of our novel. This is a chance to show our readers the spark between the characters. Even if the spark involves anger or frustration or literally running into each other and falling down, or spilling a drink down the front of their shirt. Whether or not our characters realize they've just met the love of their lives, the reader needs to be made aware that these two characters are the main love interests. The moment should be meaningful to both the reader and the two characters. Even if the characters knew each other in advance, this is the moment that changes the trajectory of their lives. During the beginning of a romance story, the setup, there should be some sparks flying. Those could be good sparks, like attraction and butterflies in the tummy, or they can be conflicts, like anger between a geeky scientist and the blonde woman who spilled coffee down the front of his shirt. Often there will be a combination of sparks just to make things interesting. Something pulls them together, something pulls them apart. Something external should force our love interests together. This shouldn't just be a desire to spend time together. Perhaps they're stuck together, trying to solve a problem or rescue a group of people who've been trapped under a pile of debris after an earthquake. Or they've fallen into a crevice and can't escape spending time together. They should be hesitant or resistant being together. They should be stuck together but think they should stay away from each other. Maybe they are from different worlds or societies. Perhaps she's a snobby celebrity and he's a geeky scientist. Or she's a vampire and he's a werewolf. Or they're sworn enemies. The middle of a romance novel. The middle section of a romance novel can be quite long and complex. Our main characters will fall in and out of love, be tested, take one step forward only to be pulled back, there should be push and pull cycles, experimenting within their interactions, testing their new relationship. This middle section is often called the fun and games section of the book because the author is playing around with the character's emotions. During this section, our characters start to trust each other a little and recognize the good in each other. Something emotionally intimate should happen that involves some tenderness or vulnerability. They should acknowledge their interest in each other and maybe even decide to pursue a relationship. They are drawn to each other and desire one another. In most romance novels, there is an almost kiss, when something serendipitous happens and then something suddenly tears them apart. The first kiss between two main characters is usually the most important, and yet we're going to interrupt them halfway through the kiss. We're so mean. Perhaps the phone will ring or someone rushes into the room startling them. Or maybe there's an aftershock from the earthquake. Something external pulls them apart. This usually isn't one of the characters having second thoughts. They both want to kiss each other, consensually. Even if one of them initiates the kiss, the other should react by leaning closer or succumbing to the desire, even if just for a few seconds. After more trials and conflicts and antagonistic forces attempting to separate them, our characters finally get their big romantic moment. 
cue the 80s makeout music and throw them into each other's arms. Whatever was making them miserable and causing them doubts is pushed aside for the passion they can no longer deny. This is the moment the readers have been waiting for. This is the scene that gets the characters and the readers that moment of satisfaction. Give it to them and make it good. Now that they admit they're falling for each other, have desire for one another, and hope for a future together, we're going to tear them apart. Cruel, aren't we? Everything falls apart, dark moment. In the real world, love does not conquer all. Whatever outside force would inevitably push them apart is still in their way despite the profession of love. Their determination to make things work may have sounded good at the time, but life is not a fairy tale. Our job as the author is to push them apart one last time. There is a feeling of deep loss and regret as they watch each other walk away. This is often referred to as the dark moment. This is another big conflict with increasingly difficult internal and external obstacles. They're miserable. This moment of agony could last an hour or months or years, but it's a time of depression, misery, and the feeling that life can't possibly go on without the other. They can't go back to the way they were before falling in love. Therefore, life as they know it is over, and life with the one they love isn't possible. So why go on? Side note about the dark moment. Almost every plot structure features a particularly dark moment near the end of the plot when everything has fallen apart and everything has gone wrong and the hero is severely discouraged. Romance novels are no exception. If you're writing a story with a romantic subplot, the dark moment in your main plot may not be the same time as the dark moment in your romantic subplot. They're often most effective if they are opposing. Our hero may finally succeed in saving the people who are stranded because of the earthquake and then, during his celebration, realize he's lost the love interest. Or he may have to choose between saving the people and saving the love interest. And the story continues no matter what he chooses because there's one more challenge to overcome in the main plot. But let's continue talking about a romance plotline. Grand Gesture and Big Final Kiss Although we're not going to make it that easy, we're also not going to make it that difficult either. This is the moment when the guy stands before a crowd of people and declares, I can't live without you and I'll do whatever it takes to be with you. And this is the moment the girl runs to him and throws herself into her arms and declares, I love you too. And they kiss and hug and the crowd swoons. Often this takes place in front of their peers or their families or their co-workers and involves being vulnerable and tearing down the walls around their hearts and throwing the pieces on the floor never to be built again. If our characters are adults, this is the commitment to get married, have babies, and drive off into the sunset together, committing to be happy forever. If the characters are teens, this is the moment they stand on the gym floor at prom with romantic music pulling their bodies together, knowing that all will be well in the world because on Monday morning, they'll walk into the school holding hands. Epilogue, if needed. Not every story needs an epilogue, but romance readers really want one. This should happen a little bit into the future, after enough time has passed to prove to the reader that this couple is committed for the long run. Many times the epilogue happens on their wedding day when they finally walk down the aisle after six months of planning the perfect dress and flowers and pulling their lives together so they can finally put that ring on the other's fingers. Or a year after their anniversary when the woman declares to the man, guess what, we're having a baby. If our characters are teens, this could be the first day of college when they're moving into their dorms and are excited that they are adults now and they can get on with the rest of their lives. They have four years of exciting college life together at one or the other's dream college. Or a couple of years later when they come back to the place they fell in love and one of them gets down on one knee with a ring in their hand begging for marriage. You get the idea. An epilogue will wrap up those loose ends and show your reader that these guys mean forever. We need to make our readers sigh and swoon and close the book with a satisfied smile. Note. If you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 4. Three-Act Plot Structure Now that we've had a refresher on the basic romance plotline, let's add those elements into a non-romance story structure starting with a three-act plot structure. 
Remember, when using romance as a subplot rather than the main plot, some of the bullet points on the romance plot line will be irrelevant. You simply do what's right for your story. The following bullets are the key points in the three-act plot structure that you'll be learning about in this chapter. Act 1. Setup. Exposition. Everyday life. Inciting incident. External. Plot point 1. Point of no return. Act 2. Confrontation. Rising action. Try fail cycles with setbacks and overcoming setbacks. Midpoint. Bigger setback than any previous. Plot point 2 the moment when the protagonist becomes proactive. Act 3, Resolution. Reclimax, Darkest Hour, Climax, Victory, Denouement. New Reality, Hope for the Future. The components of the three-act structure are the setup, the confrontation, and the resolution. Each act is connected by a plot point or turning point. A famous literary example of the three-act plot structure is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. A not-so-famous literary example is our soon-to-be-popular Earthquake Story. We may need to name our Earthquake Story something other than Earthquake Story by the end of this book. In its basic form, our plot in the Earthquake example is as follows. An earthquake happens, which causes the earth to crumble and shake beneath the character's feet, which causes them to fall into a crevice, which requires the characters to work together to climb out of the hole. Where can we add in a little romance? Remember back in chapters 2 and 3 when we talked about our hero meeting his love interest at the cafe? We talked about how the meet-cute in this scenario was happening simultaneously with the opening scene of the story. Another place that would be good to add the meet-cute would be immediately following the earthquake. The hero stands there thankful to be alive, Then he looks down and sees that a beautiful woman has fallen into the crack where the earth opened up and is hanging on by her fingers to a rock ledge. The hero grabs her arm to help her up and they look into each other's eyes. Bam. Meet cute. For our story, let's combine those. They can meet at the cafe, have a moment where she spills her drink down the front of his white shirt, and then the earthquake happens and she falls into the crevice. Later in this book, we'll look at an example when the hero doesn't meet the love interest until several chapters in. For now, let's just focus on the two lovebirds meeting near the beginning of the story. First, let's go over the main plot, and then we'll break it down to show where you can add in some romance. Act 1. The Setup In the setup of the three-act structure, the exposition basically introduces the reader to the main character's everyday life. This is the life he lives before the inciting incident changes his whole world. Earthquake Story Main Plot In our earthquake story, our hero is a seismologist who is getting ready for his usual day in his everyday life. The setup would show the reader what the world looks like before the earthquake happens. The main characters will be shown in their everyday lives. The roads will be level, the buildings will be in their upright positions, the birds will be singing, and the sun will be shining kidding, sort of. The hero stops at a cafe on his way to work. He knows a big earthquake is likely to occur at any time, but doesn't realize he'd experience the earthquake while at breakfast. Then the earthquake happens, and a person falls into a crevice directly in front of our hero. There's our first big event, and would be considered the inciting incident. Once the earthquake happens, nothing will ever be the same. Once our hero sees that a person has fallen, He could never just walk away without trying to help. Romantic subplot. While getting coffee, our hero runs into a pretty girl and she spills her drink down the front of his shirt. Meet cute. He's furious and says she's clumsy and disrespectful. Reaction to the meet cute. She loses her temper and stomps out of the cafe. Sparks fly. The earthquake happens seconds later and the woman falls into a crevice. Plot point one. There is often confusion between the inciting incident and the plot point one. In many stories, they happen very close together or even simultaneously. You could almost think of the inciting incident as something external that happens and the plot point one as the action that the hero takes in relation to the inciting incident. It is the point of no return for the hero, the point at which he leaves his comfort zone whether reluctantly or willingly. Plot point one could be emotional or physical and could involve a mentor. It should be tied to the hero's internal conflict as well as the main conflict of the story. Earthquake Story Main Plot In our earthquake story, the inciting incident, the earthquake and person falling, 
and the plot point one, our hero deciding he must help the person who has fallen, happen almost simultaneously. Our hero has no control of the earthquake, but he controls how he will react afterward. He can either lie on the broken ground, curl up in a ball, and hope someone else saves him, or he can pull himself back up. Our hero is going to pull himself back up and help rescue the person who has fallen. Romantic subplot, our hero realizes that the person who has fallen in the crevice is the girl he met at the cafe and feels frustrated because of how she spilled her drink all over him and lost her temper. Act 2. Confrontation. In the three-act structure, the second act will include a series of try-fail cycles with multiple setbacks and overcoming setbacks. This act is a great place to add romantic story elements because each setback or success in the main conflict can include little bits of romance. Remember to keep the focus on the main problem to be solved, though. In our earthquake story, the main problem to be solved is that a person fell into a crevice during an earthquake and needs to be rescued. Rising action. Try-fail cycles with setbacks and overcoming setbacks. During this part of the story, our hero is mostly reacting to the circumstances rather than making decisions proactively. He's trying to solve the problems, learn from the setbacks, orient himself to this new environment he's fallen into, and things don't go very well. Make the challenges dangerous, either mentally, emotionally, or physically, with serious consequences, and let the hero fail. Multiple times. The rising action part of the story is a great place to introduce new characters who can help the protagonist, and one of those characters could be a love interest. This is also a good place to add subplots, which is why it lends itself to the insertion of a romantic subplot. Midpoint. Bigger setback than any previous. At the midpoint of a story, there should be a setback that is bigger than any previous and should create serious doubts that they will accomplish their goal. This setback could raise the stakes and make success an even more important objective. Perhaps one of the characters has a serious injury and needs to get to the hospital right away. Or maybe the hero falls in love with the person he's trying to save and now can't fathom the prospect of not having a long and prosperous life together. By this point in the story, the hero will have had some successes overcoming other challenges and will think he can face anything, but will soon find out that is not the case. This setback should be difficult, but not something that will completely break down the hero. Earthquake story. Let's take a look at how Act 2 could play out in our earthquake story. Once the earthquake happens, nothing will ever be the same. Now our story has entered Act 2, which can last a really long time. Most of the rest of the book can take place in Act 2. Main plot. When the earthquake subsides, the hero takes a deep breath and is thankful to be alive. Then he looks down and sees that the beautiful woman from the cafe has fallen into the crack where the earth opened up and is hanging on by her fingers on a rock ledge. The main problem to be solved is that a person has fallen and needs to be rescued. As far as the main plot is concerned, this person our hero is helping could be anyone, from a friend, a child, complete stranger, pet dog, whatever. Helping the person who has fallen is how he overcomes the first setback. Romantic subplot. When our hero finds that the woman from the cafe has fallen and needs help, that's the second interaction on the basic romance plotline. The hero grabs her arm to help her up and they look into each other's eyes, feeling a powerful connection to one another. That is an example of something pulling them together. And then the rock slide occurs and they both fall together into the crevice. Main plot. Their falling is an example of another setback. Trying to climb back up is an example of overcoming the setback. Again, as far as the main plot is concerned, the person who he's helping could be anyone. Romantic subplot. When our hero helps the woman up, that is part of the second interaction and is something pulling them together from the romance plotline. They get halfway up and then slide back down, and in the process, the love interest sprains her ankle. The hero rips part of his shirt to wrap up her ankle. Main plot. Them getting halfway up and then sliding back down is another setback. The person our hero is trying to help sprains her ankle and our hero rips his shirt to wrap her ankle. This is an example of overcoming the setback. Romantic subplot. Their attempting to climb out of the hole is an example of forced interactions or outings. And her spraining her ankle is the something happens to increase attraction. They have an emotionally intimate moment. 
We may even have them look into each other's eyes and experience an almost kiss. Then a pipe bursts and water starts filling the fissure they're trapped in. They try again to climb. Main plot. The pipe bursting and water filling the fissure are examples of more setbacks. And them trying again to climb out is overcoming setbacks. Romantic subplot. The pipe bursting is a way to add in an antagonist. In this case, that would be more accurately called an antagonistic force. Their trying to climb back out is a good example of frustration relating to the antagonist. Midpoint. Suddenly there's an aftershock. They fall back down and nearly drown. Main plot. The aftershock and them falling back down and nearly drowning is another setback. Romantic subplot. The aftershock is the unexpected twist that forces them closer. Climbing back up is negotiating the unexpected twist. Plot point two. Protagonist becomes proactive. The second plot point should be a little more complex than what I'm presenting here with our oversimplified earthquake story. This should be the section of the story when the hero pushes himself back into action after the setbacks during the midpoint. This is a good place for the character to have some self-reflection or have a revelation about life and gain the confidence needed to push through and solve the main conflict of the story. This section could also involve a mentor or merge with one of the other subplots, possibly even the romantic subplot, since that's what this book is about. Earthquake Story Let's see how this all comes together in our earthquake story. Main Plot For plot point two, our hero finds a handhold to pull himself up and finds a way to pull his love interest up also. Our hero finding a handhold to pull himself back up is a way to overcome the setback. Again, as far as the main plot is concerned, the person he's helping could be anyone. Romantic subplot. Our hero pulling the love interest out of the crevice is an example of the fun and game section of the book because the author is playing around with the character's emotions. Act 3. Resolution. The final act is where everything gets wrapped up, or set up for the next book. There should be more drama than any previous part, more setbacks, more false defeats, and one final push toward victory. The hero must be the hero within his own story. You can't have some other force or person swoop in at the last minute to fix everything. There has to be a conclusion to the story, even if the conclusion is a cliffhanger. All subplots should be wrapped up, including the romantic subplot. Preclimax. In the preclimax, the hero has a proactive plan to defeat the antagonist, but fails miserably. This moment of defeat is often called the darkest hour. The hero should experience the biggest setback yet, which can be either physical or emotional. Earthquake Story. Main Plot. The water is still rising, the hero is sweating, trying to reach the top. This is another setback. When he reaches the top and almost drops the person he's trying to rescue is another example of a setback. Romantic subplot. Everything that happens in this section is an example of more trials and conflicts and antagonistic forces attempting to separate the hero from his love interest. Climax. In the climax, the hero defeats the antagonist or antagonistic force against all odds. He should use everything he's learned throughout the story to push through this last big challenge and proactively succeed in solving the main conflict. Earthquake Story Main Plot Finally, he yanks one more time and she's up, and they're both lying on solid ground again, and they're panting and exhausted but thankful to be alive. This is the proactive action that solves the main conflict. Romantic Subplot Perhaps when they get to the top and are exhausted, thankful to be alive, they could have a real kiss and deepening desire. Denouement. Part of the resolution is to show the readers the new reality. The roads are no longer level, the buildings are crumbled, and the characters are standing there looking at the landscape, hugging their loved ones, just thankful they're alive, and have lived to tell the tale of the big earthquake. Remember the plot in our earthquake example. An earthquake happens, which causes the earth to crumble and shake beneath the character's feet, which causes them to fall into a crevice, which requires the characters to work together to climb out of the hole. Anything else that happens, including the romantic stuff, is subplot. Earthquake Story Hint of hope for the future or happily ever after Main Plot 
The characters are standing there, looking at the broken landscape, hugging their loved ones, just thankful they're alive and have lived to tell the tale of the big earthquake. This is the new reality of the denouement, as well as the hope for the future. Romantic subplot. This is a great place for our hero and his love interest to have a big kiss. This is the real kiss and deepening desire and big declaration of happily ever after and everything coming together. Can you see how all of this weaves together into a story? The three acts, setup, confrontation, and resolution are connected by plot points or turning points that propel the story into the next act. If you can separate out the main plot from the romantic subplot, then you'll be able to see how easy it is to weave romance into almost any storyline. Note, if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 5. Hero's Journey Story Structure In the hero's journey, the hero leaves an ordinary life to set off on a quest to save the world. While on this adventure, the hero acquires a mentor, a team of friends, a magic ring or talisman, single-handedly saves the world, and returns home a triumphant and changed being. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien is a great literary example of the hero's journey story structure. Our soon-to-be-famous earthquake story is another great example. The following bullets are the key points in this plot structure that you'll be learning about in this chapter. Act 1. Setup. Departure. Bullet points. The ordinary world. Call to adventure. Refusal of the call. Meeting the mentor. Crossing the threshold. Act 2. Initiation. Bullet points. Test. Allies. Enemies. Approach to the inmost cave. The ordeal. Reward. Seizing the sword. Act 3. Return. The road back. Resurrection. Return with the elixir. Act 1. Setup. Departure. The ordinary world. This is the setup for your story. Introducing the hero in their everyday life. Give the reader a reason to like the hero and hint at something that displeases them or something the hero wishes were different. This might be a good time to show the hero as lonely or wishing they had a significant other, but not the time to introduce the love interest. There is usually no romance other than possibly a desire for something more in the hero's life. Earthquake Story Main Plot For the hero's journey outline, let's tweak our premise a little. Our hero is a seismologist who is aware that an earthquake is building beneath Anchorage, Alaska, which is likely to cause a large tsunami along the west coast of the United States. Because he's known as a doomsday crier who regularly lectures and warns people that a big earthquake is coming and coastal communities need to be preparing for a big tsunami, his warnings are largely ignored. Until the 9.2 megathrust earthquake happens and damage is reported all up and down the northern coastal region. Our hero is a geek who is so intelligent most people can't understand him anyway. He's lonely but resigned to the fact that he'll never find a woman who will share his passion or who is smart enough to hold a reasonable conversation. Romantic subplot? There is usually no romance other than possibly a desire for something more in their life. Call to Adventure also called the inciting incident, the call to adventure is something disruptive that drives the hero out of an ordinary life and makes life uncomfortable. This is usually a challenge, mission, or quest with real stakes that are clear to the reader. The inciting incident should be exciting, dramatic, and important, and may even be a matter of life or death. This is something that has to be conquered before your hero can journey back to the ordinary world. The call to adventure is not a good time to have a love interest involved unless the call is to save or rescue the love interest. Your hero needs to have their mind focused on the call and not on matters of the heart. There is usually no romance other than possibly a desire for something more in their life. Earthquake Story Main Plot Our hero experiences the earthquake and its effects from where he lives in Portland, Oregon but thinks there's nothing more he can do to protect the coastal cities from the likely tsunami than what he has already done. 
he gets word from his sister, who lives near the tiny community of Cape Mears. She says they've been cut off from communication and won't receive word of the tsunami until it's too late. He is encouraged to go and warn the people there. Romantic subplot. There is usually no romance other than possibly a desire for something more in their life. Refusal of the call. Most heroes hesitate or refuse the call to adventure because the challenge is dangerous or comes with personal risk. Your hero should have a compelling reason to refuse, but an even bigger reason to take on the challenge. Perhaps your hero is leaving behind a potential love interest just as they're starting a relationship, but someone's life is at stake, and it falls on your hero to save that person. A good twist might combine a love interest back home and a potential love interest who is the person they're trying to save. Earthquake Story Main Plot Our hero refuses to drive all the way to the coast to warn the people because it's counterintuitive to the message he's trying to send, to move inland as quickly as possible. He knows they only have about four hours until the likely tsunami arrives. Then he learns of a beautiful park ranger at the local wildlife refuge who swears she witnessed the animals running away from the coast. He and another scientist, who has devoted his career trying to prove that animals can sense when a tsunami is coming, hop into the car and race toward the coast. They only have an hour and a half drive and feel they can warn the people and still get far enough away from the coast before the tsunami arrives. Romantic subplot? Our hero learns about a beautiful park ranger at the local wildlife refuge who swears she witnessed the animals running away from the coast. He's curious about her observance, but hasn't met her yet. Meeting the Mentor The mentor should be someone with wisdom and experience to provide your hero with training, confidence, tools, knowledge, or skills needed to overcome the hero's previous objections and become physically and mentally ready to succeed on the journey. Remember, This happens after the hero has responded to the call to adventure, but during the time when the hero still has hesitations. You should make it clear that without the mentor, your hero would not be able to succeed. Include some sort of revelation or tool your hero needs, or thinks they need, to overcome the main story challenge. The mentor should not be the love interest, but could be a good person to turn to later on in the story when the hero is looking for advice during the romantic subplot dark moment. Earthquake Story Main Plot As they're driving toward the coast, the other scientist verses our hero on everything he needs to know about animal behavior and how to use observations to predict where the worst of the devastation will occur. Romantic Subplot Our hero hasn't met the beautiful park ranger yet, but he and the other scientists talk about her, if only in regard to her observation. Crossing the threshold. This is the pivotal turning point, or point of no return, when the hero is thrust out of the ordinary world and into the unknown world by some external force, such as an antagonist or a dramatic event. Often, an explosion occurs, or the mentor is killed off, or an important item or person is stolen or kidnapped. Perhaps the love interest could be kidnapped or fall into a crevice, forcing your hero to repel after them even if your hero is afraid of heights. Whatever the conflict, this is the moment the hero is fully engaged in the challenge. No going back. Earthquake Story Main Plot When they arrive at the wildlife preserve, they meet the park ranger. She acts as an eyewitness and shows the scientists trail cams and maps and says she's willing to drive with them up to Cape Mears to warn the people. As they're driving, an aftershock occurs, which causes a landslide that destroys the road to get back to civilization. In the process, the mentor is crushed in a landslide, killed, and is removed from the story. This will be devastating to the hero, but he knows he must go on or he won't save the people in time. Romantic Subplot Our hero meets the beautiful park ranger, with whom he feels an instant connection. This would be the meet-cute of the romantic subplot. Act 2. Initiation. Test Allies Enemies. Your hero will face a series of challenges in the new unknown world, which will test their new skills and knowledge. Although your hero has new tools and confidence, they are still learning how to best utilize them. Overwhelm your hero with dangers and enemies that are actively working against the hero, making the hero in need of assistance from allies. If you haven't already introduced a love interest in your story, now would be the time. The love interest could be an ally or an enemy. 
They could be someone who starts off as just another person in the group of allies and quickly stands out as the obvious love interest. This is about as far into the story as you should wait before including a romantic subplot. You want the reader to care about the love interest in order for them to understand your hero's desire to have a relationship with that person. These things take time. Earthquake Story Main Plot they meet up with the local governmental leadership who also agree to help warn the people. They divide and conquer, intending to encourage everyone to meet up at the local fire department. Multiple aftershocks occur, creating more landslides that cut them off from civilization. Romantic subplot. Our hero and the park ranger travel together and feel sparks fly, even as they're on this perilous mission. Getting into the truck together would be an example of something pulling them together, and when multiple aftershocks occur and they're cut off from the civilization, that would be an inciting action that forces them together. During this perilous mission, a decision is made to make the best of the situation through forced interactions and working together. Approach to the inmost cave. Having survived the previous tests and challenges, your hero and allies deserve a brief reprieve. This is their chance to regroup, reflect on recent events, and formulate a new plan. They may need to gather supplies, bandage wounds, and prepare to face the next challenge. This would be a great time for your hero and the love interest to have a tender moment, maybe even an almost kiss that gets interrupted. Or if you're writing something a little spicier, to let off a little sexual tension. Only include a little bit of romance, though. You want the tension in the main plot and romantic subplot to continue to build. Earthquake Story Main Plot they get most of the community to the fire station and regroup, make a plan, and provide triage to the injured. Romantic subplot. During that time, our hero and his new love interest share an almost kiss that gets interrupted by a woman running into the building, claiming her son and his friend were playing at the beach and now she can't find them. The Ordeal. The ordeal should be a dramatic transformative event with the highest stakes so far that tests your hero at the central conflict in the story. Your hero will need to draw upon new skills and knowledge and transition through a dark moment. This section will trigger a metaphorical death and rebirth of the hero and may include the loss of an ally, mentor, or loved one. If you're writing a tragedy, this might include the death of your love interest, or maybe a major injury to the love interest, prompting your hero to face all remaining challenges while attempting to carry their love interest to safety. I know this seems harsh, but remember that romance is the subplot, not the main story. As a romance writer, I prefer happy endings, so I'll probably never write a tragedy. But they are extremely popular, so follow your muse. Earthquake Story Main Plot Of course, our hero and the park ranger leap into action along with other members of the team and head to the beach intent on finding the two children. They are running out of time. They have to rely on each other's expertise, knowing of geography and geology and cartography, and work together to find those boys. Romantic Subplot The woman running into the building claiming her son and his friend are missing at the beach is an unexpected twist that forces them together, and their running to the coast to find the kids is negotiating the unexpected twist. Reward Seizing the Sword your hero and most of the allies have made it through the ordeal and are allowed a moment to stop and celebrate a victory. This is another chance to catch their breath, regroup, and reflect on all that has happened so far. Their reward for everything they've endured is usually an item or knowledge your hero has been fighting for, something they will need to defeat the antagonist in the coming climax. This is the perfect spot for your hero and love interest to finish what they started during that almost kiss or minor release of sexual tension. This is a great place for a passionate kiss and the big declaration of love. Earthquake Story Main Plot They find the boys and get them to safety. This is a great moment to stop and celebrate a victory. Romantic Subplot our hero and his love interest share a big passionate kiss to finish what they started during the almost kiss or minor release of sexual tension. There could also be the big declaration of love and hope that they can find a way to begin a relationship. Act 3. Return. The road back. But wait, there's more. Just because they've obtained a reward doesn't mean their trials are over. On the contrary, 
On The Road Back, your hero and allies will face their most dire circumstances. There will be an increase in tension, heightened stakes, and preparation for the final battle. They know they must face the antagonistic force head-on, and failure is not an option. Remember that the romance is the subplot. This is the time to reconfirm the danger and urgency of the central conflict of the story, to remind the reader why your hero started on this journey in the first place. Now would be a good time for your hero and love interest to work together hand-in-hand to prepare to face the climatic ending. Alternatively, they could be forced apart during this dire circumstance, heightening the tension and stakes. Earthquake Story Main Plot They realize they've gathered the people to safety after the earthquake, but the tsunami is now only a few moments away. To the horror of the adults, some of the teenagers decide they want to stand on the cliffs overlooking the ocean to watch the tsunami move onto the shore. The adults put themselves in danger to bring the teens back, only to encounter landslides and aftershocks, and one of the teens nearly falls off the cliff during a rock slide and holds on by a tree root. Romantic subplot. There won't be much romance in this section other than our hero and his love interest working together to get the teens to safety. Resurrection The resurrection is the ultimate showdown between your hero and the villain or antagonistic force. This is the climax of the story, where your hero is fighting for more than just themselves. They're fighting to save other people or even save the world. The hero is using all that has been learned throughout the journey and undergoes the greatest test of those new abilities. The hero defeats the antagonist and comes out of the confrontation transformed in some dramatic way. This would be a great time for your hero, who has now proven himself worthy to be called a hero and love interest, to share a tender and grateful hug. Often, as the main conflict is coming to a close, their love story is just beginning. They might have many happy adventures in the years to come, but our main plot is not quite finished, so let's keep going. Earthquake Story Main Plot Just as the adults pull the teen up from where he's hanging off the ledge, they watch the tsunami move toward the shore, wave heights gaining in size until they are nearly over the cliffs. They race inland, encountering more obstacles, and one member of the team is nearly washed out to sea. They finally get far enough inland, and to high enough ground and count the survivors. Romantic subplot. Our hero and the beautiful park ranger share a tender hug and hope for a future together. Return with the elixir. Welcome your hero back to the ordinary world with a celebration and newfound respect as a reward for facing terrible dangers and risking their life. This is a chance to reiterate the hero's growth and the reasons for the journey. The hero can be seen as confidently displaying whatever prize they brought home, such as new skills or abilities, an object, knowledge, or understanding of the world. Perhaps the quote-unquote prize is the love interest. If the original goal of the story was to rescue the princess, this is a very logical prize. Perhaps your hero is returning with the love interest as equals, holding hands, triumphantly returning together. But again, remember that the romance is a subplot. The hero is coming home from the hero's journey, not a romance journey. The hero just happened to have found love along the way. Earthquake Story Main Plot Our hero is met with celebration and newfound respect in the scientific community. He now has an eyewitness account of the animal's behaviors and proof that his predictions about the earthquake and tsunami were accurate. Romantic Subplot He and the beautiful park ranger move to Portland to start a relationship, and the assumption is that they live happily ever after. Note, if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 6. Save the Cat Plot Structure Originally developed for film, the Save the Cat plot structure focuses on creating a character the reader cares about and seems to be a more detailed version of the three-act plot structure. This structure is mainly used for character-driven stories with a hero whose mission or adventure is blocked by an antagonistic force. The midpoint of the story is always the point at which a big plot twist is revealed and the hero realizes they are, for better or worse, in a fight for their life. 
the second half of the story leads to a final scene that is either a victory or catastrophe for the lead character. Using the Save the Cat plot structure helps with the placement of essential plot points, such as an inciting incident, a life-changing event, or the false defeat of an antagonistic force. This organization usually follows a beat sheet, which is an organized list of major plot events and pivotal moments that authors can use to map out their story during the outline stage. The following bullets are the key points in this plot structure that you'll be learning about in this chapter. Opening image, theme stated, setup, catalyst, debate, break into two, B story, fun and games, midpoint, bad guys close in, all is lost, dark night of the soul, break into three, the finale, and final image. Beat number one, opening image, zero to one percent. The opening image is a short visual description of your main character, a snapshot of their world before the story begins, and the overall feel and tone of the story. There is usually no romance at this stage other than possibly a desire for something more in their life. Earthquake story. Main plot. As with the other outlines, let's have our hero be a seismologist who is aware that an earthquake is building beneath Anchorage, Alaska, which is likely to cause a large tsunami along the west coast of the United States. Our hero is a geek who is so intelligent most people can't understand him anyway. Romantic subplot? There is usually no romance at this stage, but it could be noted that our hero is lonely and resigned to the notion that he'll never find a woman who will share his passion or who is smart enough to hold a reasonable conversation. Beat number two, theme stated, 5%. Theme is a central topic, subject, or message that the reader should be shown within the first 5% of the story, although the main character may not be aware of it yet. This is the story's deeper meaning, the life lesson your hero will learn. Some examples include good versus evil, pursuit of love, coming of age, man versus nature, man versus self, man versus society, faith versus doubt, Cinderella, rags to riches, riches to rags. Certain themes are more likely to include romance, such as the pursuit of love or a Cinderella story, but many are not. Be careful not to force romance into a story just because you want it to be there. Earthquake story. Main plot. The main theme for the earthquake story is man versus nature. Other themes could include man versus society, convincing the scientific community that our hero is not a doomsday kook, and man versus self, overcoming one's own fears. Romantic subplot. Because the romance is a subplot, it's understated. However, this earthquake love story is a classic mystery thriller suspense theme of working together to rescue or save someone or something. Beat number three, setup, 1% to 10%. The setup includes a deeper dive into your hero's life, introducing other characters and challenges the hero is dealing with, such as health problems, toxic relationships, character flaws, etc. With the introduction of more characters, a love interest could be woven into the story. If handled correctly, adding in romance at this stage in your story could develop the story into a multi-genre romance where the romantic plot is equal in hierarchy to whatever other plot is involved. Earthquake Story Main Plot The first 10% of the story should show the hero in his natural environment as a seismologist who is either warning people about the dangers or being called upon to consult others in their rescue efforts. Because our hero regularly gives lectures and training to coastal communities teaching about earthquake and tsunami preparation, his warning goes largely ignored or dismissed as doomsday ranting. In the beginning of our story, our hero is teaching a group of high school students in the tiny community of Cape Mears about earthquakes and tsunamis and pointing down the cliff explaining how an earthquake on the other side of the world could create a tsunami that could travel across the ocean and climb up those cliffs and wash away the town. All the teenagers poo-pooed his warnings except one intelligent boy who had lots of questions and seemed to know a lot about geology. While they were yet teaching, they felt a tremor, which gave him the chance to talk about where in the world that earthquake might have happened and talk about how large the earthquake likely was. They talk about how the further away the earthquake, the larger it would have to be in order for them to feel it. Our hero speculated that this one was large but far away. As they're standing on the edge of the cliffs, looking out into the ocean, an aftershock broke part of the cliff and a girl fell. 
the hero and the intelligent teen boy work together to rescue her. That's our save the cat moment. It's dramatic and suspenseful, but it happens before the catalyst. Romantic subplot? Romance is not usually included at this stage in the story unless it's just a meet-cute or something superficial. The focus needs to stay on the main plot. Beat number four, Catalyst, 10%. Otherwise known as the inciting incident, the catalyst is what starts the story rolling. Your hero is catapulted into a crisis or life-changing event, which disrupts their entire worldview. During this stage, the love interest would likely be experiencing the inciting incident alongside the hero. If they recently met, they are likely still close to one another at the time the crisis or life-changing event occurs. Earthquake Story Main Plot In this version of the story, the version of the story that we're writing with the Save the Cat story structure, the earthquake is not the inciting incident or catalyst. Our hero has returned to his home in Portland and is analyzing the data from the earthquake when he predicts that a tsunami is likely to occur. He gets word that there is damage all up and down the northern coastal region and the community of Cape Mears, where he'd been teaching two hours prior, has been cut off from communication. They won't receive word of the tsunami until it's too late. He is encouraged to go and warn the people there. The catalyst in our earthquake story is the moment when Kate Mears is cut off from communication. Romantic subplot. There is no notable romance at this stage in the story. Beat number five. Debate. 10% to 20%. Usually internal, the debate is the moment your hero resists doing what needs to be done and is reluctant to change. The hero is wondering what to do and where to go because he wants his world to stay the same. If your story already contains a love interest at this point, they are likely involved in the reluctance to change. A common plot point in a romance novel involves the two love interests denying their attraction and desire to be together. Even if you have a multi-genre story, the reluctance and debate sections don't have to occur at the same time. If, for instance, your hero finds out they have cancer and meets an attractive nurse at the hospital, the debate may include whether to fight the cancer with chemotherapy or let the cancer run its course. The hesitance about starting a new relationship might happen a few chapters later when the hero and the nurse realize they have feelings for each other, but know it's not a good idea to get involved with someone who might be dying. Earthquake Story Main Plot The hero is reluctant to drive to the coast because it's counterintuitive to the message he's trying to send, to move inland as quickly as possible. He knows they only have about two hours until the likely tsunami arrives. He is debating whether he should travel to the coast when the tsunami is only hours away. Romantic subplot. There is not usually romance at this stage in the story. Beat number six. Break into two. 20%. As the story moves into act two, your hero recognizes that inaction is not an option and is now fully invested in rising to meet the challenge, even though the situation will include trials and obstacles. There is usually no romance at this pivotal moment unless the love interest is involved in making the decision to face the stated challenge. Earthquake Story Main Plot Our hero realizes that if he doesn't drive to the coast, the people in Cape Mears may not survive. They only have an hour and a half drive and feel they can warn the people and still get far enough away from the coast before the tsunami arrives. People's lives are at stake. Romantic subplot. There is not usually romance at this stage in the story. Beat number seven, B story, 22%. This is a great place to add in the romance as the subplot because your hero is expected to meet a helper, rival, friend, or specialist whose purpose is to assist the hero on their life journey. This new character could be a love interest, or if the hero and love interest have met previously, something could happen in this scene to increase attraction. They could have an emotionally intimate moment or an almost kiss. Earthquake Story Main Plot The B story in our earthquake story involves the community working together to gather the people to the fire station. Romantic Subplot One of the community members helping with gathering the people is a woman who becomes the love interest. They have a meet-cute, but it's mainly superficial. Beat number eight, fun and games, 20% to 50%. In the fun and games section, your hero will enjoy time when they are either floundering or succeeding while trying to reach their goals. This is not the big catastrophe. These are the little challenges you throw at your hero, testing their new abilities and playing with their emotions. 
any of the usual romance plot points would make great additions to your main plot and add depth to your story. Some include sparks fly, something pulls them together, and or rips them apart, forced interactions or outings. You could also add in an antagonist, like an ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, or situational antagonist. Have your characters begrudgingly admit to themselves that they are falling for each other. Increase togetherness, flirtatiousness, and affection. Add in an unexpected twist that forces them closer, etc. Earthquake Story Main Plot The fun and game section of our Earthquake Story includes a variety of challenges such as aftershocks, landslides, places where the characters are cut off from civilization. Our hero and his allies divide and conquer, intending to encourage everyone to meet up at the local fire department. Multiple aftershocks occur, more landslides, more places where they're cut off from civilization. Romantic subplot. The romantic subplot at this stage just means that the love interest is included in all the challenges. As they're talking, our hero learns the love interest is a single mom and realizes that the teen boy he was talking to at the beginning of the story is her son. Beat number nine, midpoint, 50%. The midpoint might be a false victory or a false defeat, but should be something big that completely changes your hero's goals. They think their story is over. Their work is done. They can go home. They quickly learn that what they thought they wanted isn't actually what they need, or they've hit rock bottom and think all hope is lost. But they learn there's another way they hadn't previously considered. Remember, this is the midpoint of the main plot, not the romantic subplot. During this stage of the story, any of the following could happen but are not necessary to the main plot. A real kiss, deepening desire, dread for impending separation, internal admission that they've fallen in love, hope for a future together, etc. Earthquake Story Main Plot They finally get most of the community to the fire station and they regroup make a plan, and provide triage to those who were injured. A woman runs in claiming her son and his friend were playing at the beach, and now she can't find them. Romantic subplot. During this time, our hero and his love interest share an almost kiss that gets interrupted by a woman running into the building claiming her son and his friend were playing at the beach, and now she can't find them. Beat number 10. Bad guys close in. 50% to 75%. Remember that an antagonist is not always a person, but is more frequently an antagonistic force, and can be internal or external. The bad guys could be characters or villains coming after your hero, or their own self-sabotage. Whatever they are, they lead to a catastrophic ending. There is usually no romance at this pivotal moment unless the love interest is involved in fighting off the bad guys. Earthquake Story Main Plot Of course, our hero and the love interest leap into action, along with other members of the team, and head to the beach intent on finding the two children. They are running out of time. They have to rely on each other's expertise, knowledge of geography, geology, and cartography, and work together to find those boys. Romantic subplot. Our hero's love interest is among the team who goes to the beach to find the two children. Beat number 11. All is lost. 75%. Your hero will face a dark time when they are under extreme duress. This could involve a death or just the death of the hero's old self or old life. Remember, the all is lost moment described here is relating to the main plot, not the romantic subplot. The romantic relationship could be the only good thing holding your hero together through the dark moments in the main plot. Any of the following incidents that are usually required in a romance novel could be included, but they are not necessary to the main plot. Major setback in the romantic relationship, black moment, dark night of the soul, a grand gesture, a big final kiss, etc. Earthquake story. Main plot. The tsunami is now only a few moments away. The adults put themselves in danger to rescue the boys, only to encounter landslides and aftershocks, and one of the boys falls to his death, and there's absolutely nothing the adults can do to rescue him or even recover his body because the tsunami is just off the shore. Romantic subplot. The romantic relationship between our hero and the love interest is one of the few good things holding him together through this dark moment in the main plot. Beat number 12. Dark Night of the Soul. 75% to 80%. 
When all hope is lost, it's easy to transition into a depressive state when your hero has learned their lesson and has changed from their old self into someone new. This would be a great time to have the love interest comfort the struggling hero. This could be as tame as an arm around the hero's shoulder with comforting words or as passionate as grasping onto the pro-offered comfort by taking their relationship past the point of friendship. Earthquake Story Main Plot The whole team is grateful that they are still alive, but mourn the loss of the boy who fell off the cliff. Romantic Subplot Our hero and the love interest share a tender hug. Beat number 13 Break into 3 80% As your hero moves into Act 3, they experience an epiphany, gain key knowledge that will help them fix their situation and climb up from rock bottom. After the way the love interest provided kindness and comfort in the previous section, she could be an integral part in your hero's epiphany or acquiring knowledge. Earthquake Story Main Plot The tsunami is only a few minutes away, and they watch the tsunami move toward the shore, wave heights gaining in size until they are nearly over the cliffs. They realize they need to run for their lives, but our hero can't seem to back away from the edge where the boy has fallen to his death. Romantic subplot. The love interest tells our hero that the boy would not have wanted the hero risking any more lives because of him. Her encouragement wakes him from his stupor and he agrees to run. Beat number 14. The finale. 80% to 99%. During the finale, your hero takes everything they've gained and learned and puts it to good use to defeat the bad guys, eliminate the antagonistic force, and find that not everything is lost. If your romantic subplot has progressed to a close relationship, your hero may work together with the love interest to defeat the bad guys, eliminate the antagonistic force, and save the day. Earthquake Story Main Plot They race inland, encountering more obstacles, but finally get far enough inland and to high enough ground and count the survivors. Our hero takes comfort that his predictions and quick action helped save many lives. Romantic subplot. The love interest is an integral part of the team that helps our hero save the day. Beat number 15. Final image. 99% to 100%. The final image should mirror the opening snapshot of your story showing your hero after they have transcended the situation and represents the resolution of the story's theme. The final image of a Save the Cat story could look very similar to the ending of a romance novel, a glimpse of happily ever after. Earthquake Story Main Plot Although mourning the loss of life and damage to shoreline and properties, our hero takes comfort that his quick action saved many lives. Romantic Subplot Our hero and love interest stand together with her teen son looking out at the ocean. He puts his arm around her, musses up the teen boy's hair with fondness, and they all live happily ever after. Note, if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 7. Fichtean Curve Story Structure The Fichtean Curve is a fast-paced plot structure that opens with the conflict and has three parts, a rising action, a climax, and a falling action. The rising action takes up a large portion of the story and is nonlinear. This plot structure features a series of escalating crises that are each followed immediately by a de-escalating crisis, in which the stakes grow with each crisis. The climax is the crisis to end all other crises, and the moment the reader knows the hero has officially saved the day. Then the falling action ties up all loose ends and gives the reader a satisfying conclusion. The Fichtean Curve plot structure has a tendency to focus heavily on the crises and barely mentions the reprieves, but they're there. Still, there isn't a narrative exposition or inciting incident at the beginning of the structure. Rather, the opening scene is in the middle of a crisis, and this first crisis lasts approximately the first 15% of the story. Backstory, character development, and subplots are woven into the crises, including the romantic subplot. Part 1 of the Fichtean Curve is usually made up of three or four crises, each of which acts as a plot point, and each of which should raise the stakes and tension of the story. 
Every crisis should include a minor dip in tension and give your reader a breather and should provide foreshadowing for the final conflict. This prepares your character for their final confrontation and adds deeper meaning and satisfaction to your reader at the conclusion of your story. Notes about the romantic subplot. Any or all of the crises and or fallouts and transitions could include hints of romance. Some of the crises could even be caused by a romantic conflict. Beat 1. Rising Action, Crisis 1. Beginning of Part 1. The fallout of the first crisis leads into the second crisis, and situations continue to worsen for the hero. Earthquake Story. Main Plot. For our Fichtean Curve story, let's have our hero be a young seismologist who is a college professor in Anchorage, Alaska, when the earthquake hits. Remember, there isn't a narrative exposition or inciting incident at the beginning of the Fichtean Curve story structure. The opening scene is not the background about the seismologist or the earthquake. It's a small group of students huddled around their professor, and they experience an earthquake together and fall into a crevice. The opening line of the book could be something like, Professor, why isn't this working? And have him try to help one of his students get his handmade seismometer set up correctly. They're on location somewhere away from campus so the students can test out their cardboard creations. They think they're not getting the boxes set up correctly because they can't get them to hold still. Then they realize that what they're experiencing is an actual earthquake. Suddenly, the ground breaks apart and half the class of college student falls. When they're at the bottom of the crevice, they recognize that they are lucky to be alive. But they look up and realize they must work together to climb up the rock slide and save themselves. And all of that happens within Chapter 1. Romantic Subplot There isn't likely to be much romance in the opening scene, but there could be some hint that there's a spark of attraction between the professor and his grad student assistant, on whom he has a crush. Beat 2. Rising Action. Crisis 2. Middle of Part 1. The second crisis starts at about the 15% mark of the story. The fallout at the end of the second crisis may not be as severe as the fallout from the first crisis and may include some character growth, life lessons learned, and flickers of hope. Earthquake Story Main Plot They get halfway up and then slide back down, and in the process, someone sprains their ankle. Romantic Subplot They start climbing and get halfway up, then slide back down. And in the process, the grad student assistant sprains her ankle. Beat 3. Rising Action. Crisis 3. Middle of Part 1. The third crisis starts at the 30% mark of the story. The fallout at the end of the third crisis may not be too severe and may show things looking up for the hero. That could include some romance. Earthquake Story. Main Plot. A pipe bursts and water starts filling the fissure they're trapped in. They try again to climb, but the grad student assistant is having a difficult time. Romantic subplot. They're trapped, but the love interest can't climb or swim because of her injury. Our hero and his love interest get some good interaction because she needs him to help her. At the end of the third crisis, he pulls her to safety. Beat 4. Rising Action. Crisis 4. End of Part 1. But wait, there's more. The fourth crisis will be bad and transitions directly into the climax. The fourth crisis starts at the 45% mark of the story and lasts through about 60 to 65% mark. Earthquake Story Main Plot Suddenly, there's an aftershock. They fall back down and nearly drown. Romantic Subplot Although the situation is too dire and serious to warrant flirting, there should be a lot of longing and looking into each other's eyes and touching hands. Beat 5. Climax. Part 2. The climax is the pinnacle of the story and should include a difficult situation that cannot be easily resolved. If your hero has learned the required lessons in the mounting crises, they will be able to successfully overcome this challenge. If not, you may have written the next great tragedy. Congratulations! Someday people might be quoting lines from your story the same way they quote lines from Romeo and Juliet or breaking out into song as they're reliving the musical that was produced based on your book. Some of the best stories ever written end in tragic loss. Invest in some high-quality facial tissue. I recommend Kleenex Ultrasoft without lotion because you'll need to wipe the tears off your eyeglasses as well. 
the climax should start at approximately the 60 to 65 percent mark of the story and last through about 75 percent mark of the story. Notes about the romantic subplot. Remember that the climax is for the main story plot, not the romantic subplot. The romantic subplot may or may not ever have a climax, or any other plot point for that matter. It could just have flirty glances across the room at each other the entire story and them holding hands at the end. Or the romantic interest could fall off a cliff, leaving your hero devastated and unable to control their temper, which worsens all other conflicts. Hey, it could happen. Remember, we're writing the next great tragedy. Earthquake Story Main Plot The hero finds a handhold to pull himself and all the others up, but the water is still rising and finally they're all on solid ground, exhausted but thankful to be alive. Romantic Subplot While they're lying on safe ground, glad to be alive, they share one long passionate kiss. Another aftershock causes the ground to fall out from underneath the love interest and she tumbles to her death. The others on the hero's team hold him back from jumping in after her, saying there's nothing he can do to save her. They have to think about saving themselves. Yes, I did just kill off a main character. Remember, we're writing the next great tragedy here. Her dying is a definite setback to their potential romance, and that lends itself to a dark moment. But essentially, their love story is over. We have now wrapped up the romantic subplot. Notes about the romantic subplot? With the Fichtean curve, your main plot, and any subplots, may or may not have a happy ending. Think of Rose at the end of Titanic, saying goodbye to Jack as he sinks into the freezing water. Rose gets a somewhat happy ending. Jack dies. Oops, spoiler alert, my bad. Titanic is undoubtedly romantic, but the romance doesn't have a happy ending. Neither does Romeo and Juliet, or West Side Story, which is basically Romeo and Juliet with singing and dancing. Even though they all die in the end, we swoon as we read and watch them, right? The Fichtean curve plot structure offers a lot of freedom. Any of the above-mentioned stories could have ended with the love interest both alive and well. We wouldn't have cried as much, but just think we'd save on Kleenex. Beat 6. Falling Action. Part 3. This section ties up any loose ends, completes the character arcs of the hero and other main characters, and wraps up any subplots, including the romantic subplot. Although in our earthquake example, we wrapped up the romantic subplot in the previous scene. At the end of the falling action is the resolution, which shows the hero back in their ordinary world, for better or worse. This final scene should give the reader an idea what the hero has learned and in what way they have been transformed, or show the love of their life crying at their gravesite. Remember, I suggested the tissues without lotion. Falling action. Falling action starts at around the 75% mark and lasts through the end of the story. Earthquake Story Main Plot Seismologist is asked to give a full report to the university committee about what happened, why it happened, and how they can prevent future loss of life. The story ends with the hero receiving a phone call asking him to look over some numbers that are escalating on a fault line off the coast of Japan. He starts walking back toward his office, phone to his ear, leaving behind the battered city and coastline. Romantic subplot. There isn't time to grieve the love interest who has fallen to her death because the team still has to work together to get everyone else to safety. He later takes time to reflect and visits the love interest's hometown, meets her family and pets, and looks out over the calm ocean with longing and regret. Note. If you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 8. Other Plot Structures There are too many other plot structures to do a full write-up on each, but here is a short list of examples. Dan Harmon Story Circle The Dan Harmon Story Circle structure is a simplified version of the hero's journey but focuses more on character experiences and development. At the beginning of the story, the character is in his comfort zone, but wants something, and goes into an unfamiliar situation and must adapt to this new environment. Then he finds what he was looking for and has to pay the price for it and returns a changed man. Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling is an example of a book that could fit into the Dan Harmon story structure. When attempting to add a romantic subplot to a story plotted with the Dan Harmon story circle, follow the recommendations in Chapter 5, Hero's Journey Story Structure. 
seven-point plot structure. The seven-point plot structure is like an expanded version of the three-act plot structure, but with more detail. In this structure, the main character's starting point is known as the hook and introduces the story and the life in which the main character lives. At the plot point one, some big or significant event occurs and kickstarts the main plot. Then the first pinch point happens when an antagonistic force starts a clash. The midpoint is when the main character stops watching what's going on and steps up and takes action. The second pinch point involves more conflict with the antagonist and the character often hits rock bottom. All hope is lost. Then comes the second plot point, when the hero gets new information that helps them see the way out. The last part of this story structure is the resolution. When the climax occurs, everything is resolved and the hero achieves his goal. After a good deal of research, experts seem to unanimously agree that Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope by George Lucas is a perfect example of a story created using the seven points story structure. Can we all just agree that Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope is the greatest story ever written by a human? Congratulations, George. Did I ever tell you that I used to own all the Star Wars figurines when I was a kid? As for a romantic subplot, obviously Princess Leia is the love interest, and she gets thrown into a trash compactor along with a love triangle of men, a scruffy-looking nerf herder, and her twin brother. I mean, seriously, can we get any weirder than that? I'm not even going to try to make this into an earthquake story. You'll have to use your own imagination. When attempting to add a romantic subplot to a story plotted with the seven-point plot structure, follow the recommendations in Chapter 4, Three-Act Plot Structure. Writing into the Dark Writing into the dark is essentially not outlining at all. Let the characters tell the story. This is a great method of structuring stories if you're a naturally good storyteller even if you have no idea why you're including different story elements in a story. This is often referred to as discovery writing. The pitfall is trying to include all required genre expectations. This method works well for authors who thrive on creativity and want to see where things go without the limitations of a plot structure or who want to borrow from multiple plot structures. Writing into the dark is also well suited for those who have been writing for a long time and can do an auto-recall of the basic plot structures, or can plot unconsciously in their mind. Some people are just really good storytellers. For a lot of new authors, this is the first method used. You have a story in your head, and you just start writing. If you use this method and find that your story seems to lack something, you can research the different plot structures and figure out what you're missing. Note. If you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Chapter 9. Closing Thoughts. There you go, my friends. I have presented an overwhelming amount of information and crammed it into a very short book. Good luck. Kidding. I'm here to help. If you'd like me to walk you through this or any writing publishing challenges, I have author coaching available on my website, spencerpublishingllc.com. I hope you come away from this learning the difference between a romance and a story with a romantic subplot, as well as a basic understanding of the various kinds of romantic fiction. If you can remove the romance from a story and still have a main plot, then you don't have a romance you have a story with a romantic subplot. In a romance, the people falling in love are the main plot, whereas in a story with a romantic subplot, the romance is a love story that coexists alongside the main plot. There is also a difference between an outline, a plot, a plot structure, a subplot, and a romantic subplot. Stories can have more than one plot line, but they only have one outline. Simple stories might have just one sequence of events, which can easily be plotted on a straight line. Other stories are more complex and might have several sequence of events happening simultaneously. Even though you're writing a romantic subplot, it's important to understand how to write a romance novel. This will help you include many of the same elements from a romance into a different story structure. You may even be able to create a multi-genre romance where the romantic plot is equal in hierarchy to whatever other plot is involved and the story could fit into more than one genre. There are many plot structures that can be used to craft a story, 
and learning how to use them will help you decide which structure is best for the story you want to tell and what story to write based on the plot structure you're most comfortable with. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Keep in touch. Julie Note if you would like a complimentary printable copy of all the tables, outlines, and bonus materials mentioned in this book, please email me at julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. That's julie at spencerpublishingllc.com. Thank you for listening to How to Write a Romantic Subplot, How to Add Romance to Other Plot Structures, written by Julie L. Spencer, narrated by Julie L. Spencer. Copyright 2023 by Julie L. Spencer. Production copyright by Julie L. Spencer.